But he finished what he came for. We call Good Friday as he took our place upon the cross and it finished to set you and I free from sin and death forever. So the question, why did God have to come to this earth as a, as a mere man? And I want to, and, and I've, I've said this in, in two funerals lately, and I just want to read the first part of it, because I think it just, it helps us to make sense. And here it is. At the beginning of time, when God created the earth, he gave all dominion. Please listen to this. Focus in on this. At the very beginning of time, when God created the earth, the heavens and the earth, that he gave all dominion, power, and authority over to Satan, or over to, the, to Adam. I say, over to Adam. Adam and Eve were given the privilege to tend and to watch over the garden. God had entrusted mankind. He entrusted Adam and Eve with the earth. Everything on the earth was given over to mankind. That everything would be done through mankind. That God was so final in his decision to relinquish control over to Adam and Eve. Kind of like a parent says, listen, this is my car. But I'm going to entrust you with this car to age of 16 and you can drive. Right? If you take care of the car, okay, it'll remain pretty. We all know what teenagers do to a car. <laughs> right? But who owns the car? The mother and the father own the car. But they're giving it over to the child. See, God did the same thing. He owns the earth. He owns every star, every planet. He owns everything, created everything. But at the very beginning of time that he handed the earth over to Adam and Eve to give them responsibility, give them full control. So much so, he was fine on that decision that if the earth remained a paradise, it would be because of mankind. Mm. However, if the earth became a trash heap, it too was because of mankind. Mm. And we all know what happened. That Adam fell. He sinned. He did exactly what God told him not to do. Don't eat of the tree. But he ate of the tree. He was tricked and deceived. And he gave the dominion, power, and authority that God had entrusted him with. And he rightfully handed it over to Satan. And that's when Adam sold every human into slavery. He sold you and I into death. He sold us to Satan. And because of Adam's disobedience and his sin, we have all been given the same sentence that Satan received. Because of his disobedience and his sin, he tried to overthrow God at the very beginning of time. He sinned. His penalty is the same penalty that we have. And that's death, eternity, and hell. Forever separated from our God. See, because of that disobedience and the sin, and the sin that you and I have in our life, we are forever separated from our God, never to get another chance. But see, God never intended it to be that way. He never intended us to be separated from Him. We were made for Him, to worship Him, to have a relationship with Him. He never intended us to be separated from Him. But here's the thing. God is holy. And he knows no sin. I'm going to say that again. God is holy and he knows no sin. And there will never be a single sin that will ever enter into heaven. Not one sin. See, because if God let one sin into heaven, heaven wouldn't be heaven anymore. If we look at what one sin... The first man on this earth, what that one sin has done to this earth, and the hell that we see, the sickness, the disease, the drugs, the murder, the all pure out evil and hell that's on this earth is because of one sin. And God knows that it cannot let one sin into heaven because if he let one sin into heaven, heaven wouldn't be heaven anymore. Would you agree with me? See, if you've lied one time, you're a liar. If you've stolen one time in your life, you're a thief. If you've sinned one time, you're a sinner. And you can never make heaven your home. God wants to keep heaven heaven. God will never let the sin 
that's defiled this earth to ever enter into heaven. Sin and God do not mix. They never have and they never will. So there's nothing that you and I can do to earn our way to heaven. There's no yin, no yang, no good works, no church, no religion, no philosophy that can ever get us there because you and I would still be full of sin. There's only one way where our sins can be blotted out. And I said it at intermission. At the beginning of time, at the, at the beginning that God told Adam and Eve that without the shedding of blood, there would be no remissions of sin. So when God handed it over to Adam and Eve and then they sinned, they tried to cover themselves up with leaves. Listen to me. They tried to take a temporary solution and hide themselves from God. And God said, what are you doing? Why are you trying to hide from me? Right? And they said, because we're naked. See, their eyes were opened. And the sin that came upon them. And that's what God told them, listen, the leaves won't do. Because of your sin, you can never come into my presence again. And there was a veil that separated mankind from God. And it grieved God. And God told Adam and Eve, listen. There will be no remission of your sins, of any sins on this planet without the shedding of blood. In the Old Testament, they had to take their best animal and sacrifice it yearly for atonement for their sins. Because God set it up from the very beginning. Listen, now that you've sinned, the only way is by blood. And see, God had a plan once and for all to bring his son to this earth to shed his blood for you and I. See, when he made the decision at the very beginning of time, when he made the heavens and the earth and he handed the earth over to Adam and Eve, at that very beginning that everything would have to be done through mankind, through a man. That when Adam messed up, the first man, when he messed up and he gave the dominion, the power and authority over to Satan, when he sentenced all of us, you and I, to death, causing us to all be born into sin, there was only one way to reconcile mankind back to God, the Father. And that would have to come through a man. So you say, why did God have to come to this earth as a man? Because God at the very beginning set it up, gave full control over to a man, and the only way to set us free was through a man. But see, this man couldn't just be any man. This man had to come and never sin, to be the only human to walk through this life, through the temptations that you and I have, never to sin. See, he had to be able to be sinless in order to be worthy enough to pay the price for our redemption. To set all of mankind free from sin and death. And to reconcile us back to God the Father. See, this man had to walk out a sinless life in no, no sin. As I said earlier, God loves you and I so much that he did exactly that. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but would have everlasting life. That the God of the universe stepped out of heaven to create a way for you and I. That's why we celebrate Good Friday when he said, it is finished. That's why we celebrate Easter on Sunday because after three days, the grave couldn't hold him. Listen to me, the grave and death couldn't hold him because he had no sin in his life. See, he came to set us all free. And when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, sin and death has no control over you anymore. Because you're washed by the blood of the Savior. Right? It's nothing that you can do or I can do in our own power. That's where religion and church comes in. And it's time that the church wakes up. It's time that believers wake up and start to spread the good news of who Jesus Christ really is. To tell people that they need Jesus. They don't need church. They don't need religion. They need Jesus. Amen. And when they're washed by the blood, then they can walk through life without sin and death, without condemnation, without guilt, without shame. And they can be set free in every chain that's held them back. To be broken off because Jesus has already paid it upon the cross. The cross has the final word. God had a plan. In Peter, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, it says this. If you'll bring that up, thank you. Breathe. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. The empty life from Adam and Eve. 
It says, and the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. And if you start to look at the cross, all time is based upon the cross. It's 2018, right? When Jesus was here, right? All time is based upon Christ's birth, right? B.C. and A.D., before Christ. In A.D., a lot of people think it's after death, but it's, I don't, I can't remember the Latin word. Thank you, said. Anno Domini. Right? And so all time, listen to this, all time on this earth is based off of Christ. A supernatural event because why? Because he's the creator of the universe. He's the creator of life that he spoke everything into existence. And when he came and he spoke and he walked out his life for 33 years sinless, the world had to take notice and they did. And it's time that we get back to God's word. It's time that we get back to know the power of our God and how much that he loved you and I that he chose. He chose to do the will of God the Father to step out of heaven and to come here and to pave a way for you by dying a criminal's death by way of crucifixion. The worst death that any human has ever died. Our Savior, His love for you and I, the power that's in Him. Now listen, tonight's a little different. We're going to watch 12 minutes of Passion of Christ. And here's what I want you to think about as you're watching this. He didn't have to. He didn't have to do what he did. And I want you to think about the power of our God. When you see Jesus, he's the great I am. He spoke everything into existence. Everything was created through him, for him, and by him. And nothing's been created. That wasn't created through, for, and by Jesus. Nothing. Look at the stars. Look at every molecule, every atom, subatomic particles, everything. Look at your shirt right now. Everybody look at your shirt. It's made of molecules, right? Yeah, we've woven them into shirts, but guess what? Cotton comes from the ground, right? If you look at this chair, it's holed up. It's, it, it's made of molecules, atoms, subatomic particles that hold things together, the wall. Listen, when you dig in to understand who Jesus is, he spoke everything into existence, every atom, every molecule. He is life. He's the creator. And so when you watch this video that our creator loved us so much that he came to pave a way. So I want this Easter to be different for everyone. Because what God is placing upon my heart and the power of our God, that God wants to show his glory and his power once again. And I truly, truly believe but what God's going to do in the next months, looking forward, is going to be supernatural. And we're going to see the same things that Jesus and the disciples did back then. We're going to see now. Because the Bible says it's very clear. It's like opening up, right? This new revelation for me. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Right? Will you show this video? Tough to stomach, tough to watch. What God came to do for you and I. I think about his love, and I think about even as they mock, spit on him. As he's nailed to the cross, he says, Father, forgive me. For they know not what to do. True compassion and love. In the last seven, or the last few weeks, not seven weeks, but the last few weeks that we've been studying the seven I am statements that Jesus spoke in the book of John. And tonight that I want to look at some scriptures to help us look at the power and the love of our Savior. That he is the great I am. And I want us to look at the death and the resurrection differently tonight. And so as we leave, I want you to take truth and substance with you to know that the king came to lay his life down. And there's some things that God has shown me as we've studied the great I am and that um, 
that he is the great I am, that the, the burning bush going all the way back to Moses. When Moses said, God, who should I tell them sent me? God said, tell them I am who I am, right? And Jesus declares in John, I am the light of the world, right? I am the bread of life. And, and he says, I am the gate. And he says, I am the good shepherd. And I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. And he's telling the disciples, he's telling people, listen, in John chapter 8, he actually told the religious leaders, he said, before Abraham was, I am. And so he declared who he was, is that he was the creator of the universe, the creator of life. And we walk through the I am statements. But tonight, listen, there's a love and a power. It's revelation knowledge. And I want you to grasp these scriptures as we walk through them tonight. And I want you to take them as meat, right? The bread of life as we chew upon the living word of God. As we learn tonight, I want you to take this and your perspective, I pray, is changed. That when you look upon the cross and what Jesus did, Differently, Because when you see the power of our God and the love of our God, and at any moment he could have stopped it and he chose not to. In John 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13, if you bring that up, read. It says that there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. There's no greater love. That's exactly what Jesus did. He come and he laid down his life for you and I. We tonight are going to see Jesus' love through his power. Our God is sovereign. And I started thinking about, okay, God, what's sovereign, right? I looked up the definition of sovereign, and sovereign means supreme power and authority. When I say our God is sovereign, that means supreme authority, supreme power, right? He is the creator of the universe. He is the creator of life. That Jesus is in complete control. And tonight you're going to see that no one took his life. But he actually sacrificed his life for you and I. In John 14, verses 30 and 31. So understand God is sovereign. He says supreme power and authority. No one took his life. You say, well, we just saw him die. Listen, nobody took his life. He come to sacrifice his life. In John 14, verse 30 and 31, it says this. I don't have much more time to talk to you. Because the ruler of this world approaches. Who's the uh, ruler of this world? Satan, right? He's talking to the disciples. He's listen, I don't have much time left. He knew that Satan was coming. See, Satan thought that if he killed Jesus, that he won. And so he says, listen, the ruler of this world approaches. I love this. He has what? No power. Is it up there? He has what? No power over me. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's, let's be going. He was telling him, listen, he has, the ruler of this world, Satan has no power over me. He was teaching the disciples, he's telling us tonight, that he absolutely has no power over your life and my life. He has no power over believing, because Christ in us, the hope of glory. When Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he was telling them that I am the good shepherd. He was literally telling the bad shepherds, the religious people, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, because they kicked the blind man out of the synagogue. He said, listen, I'm the good shepherd. And we pick up what Jesus is saying here in verse uh, 17 and 18 of John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 17 through 18. He's just told them that he is the good shepherd. And he's making the Sadducees and the Pharisees aware of what they're plotting. See, Jesus knew that they're plotting to kill him. And so he said this out loud. He said, the Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back again. Say, take it back again. So he was saying, listen, the Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. He was telling the Sadducees, Pharisees, I know what you're plotting. You can't take my life. I'm coming to sacrifice my life. For I have the authority to lay it down when I want to. And I also to take it up again. That he had the authority. He went to the cross. Nobody put him on the cross. He willingly went to the cross. And he was making sure that the Sadducees and Pharisees remembered that in John chapter 10. When he said, I'm the good shepherd. You're the bad shepherds. And listen, you don't take my life. I'm coming because I have the authority. I'm going to lay it down. 
but I'm also going to take it back up again. I can't imagine being one of the Sadducees and Pharisees who were part of his killing. And then after he rose from the grave to remember what Jesus had spoke to them. No one takes his life. And as he said this, for this is what my father has commanded. Jesus come to do the will of God the Father. In John chapter 19, verses 8 through 11. See, the Romans were in control. Understand this. Pilate was a powerful man. And so Pilate has Jesus. Jesus has been arrested. And this is what Pilate, and here's the interaction between Pilate and Jesus. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? Let's stop there. Do you understand why Jesus didn't speak? Why he wouldn't speak to Pilate? Because if he spoke the truth, they'd have to let him go. Think about that, the power, right? And so Jesus kept signing. And then when he says, listen, don't you understand I have the power to crucify you or save you? I love what Jesus tells him. And Jesus said, you would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Here's the thing. Afterwards, Pilate tried to go and release him. He knew. He washed his hands of it. He knew when God spoke, right? It absolutely amazing. But here's what Jesus was telling him. Listen, you have no power over me. Who do you think you are, Pilate? It's only been given to you to release me and crucify me. In John chapter 18, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn there. And this is something that, as we were talking to the men's group a few weeks back, and as I was going over the series of the I Am statements, the great I Am, this rocks my world. And this will be our closing for tonight. But here, Jesus is going to be arrested. This is after the Last Supper. So I wanted to pick up in verse 1, John chapter 18. It says, after saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees, the garden of the sun. Judas the betrayer knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they arrived at the olive grove. Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. Who are you looking for, he asked. See, Here's the thing, it's amazing. He knows the end from the beginning. Right? He knew that they were coming and he stepped forward and he said, who are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Judas who betrayed him was standing with him. As Jesus said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. Once more he asked them, who are you looking for? And again, they replied, Jesus, the Nazarene, I told you that I am he, Jesus said. And since I am the one you want, let these others go. He did this to fulfill his own statement. I did not lose a single one of those you have given me. Then Simon Peter drew his sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave. But Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup of suffering? The Father has given me. I want to go back Bree, to uh, verse 5. And it says, he asked them who they were looking for. They said, Jesus the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And it says that when he said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. And here's what's amazing. Is that they come to a rest. The creator of the universe, the creator of life, who was life himself, who is the living word of God. And the moment they said, we're looking for Jesus, Jesus said, I am he. The moment that he said, I am he, that they literally fell back and fell to the ground. They drew back. Why? Because the creator of the universe, who spoke everything into existence, when he said, let there be light, let us make man in our image. Right? When he spoke, he's the living word of God. And so when he spoke, he wanted them to know and everyone to know that listen.
listen, you're not taking my life. If I wanted to, I have the power to kill you. And he spoke, I am he. Listen, every molecule, every atom, every subatomic particle has to bow, has to surrender to the king. Listen, when he spoke supernaturally, right, the soul, the spirits in their body fell back in the presence of the king. That's supernatural, right? He spoke and they fell down. I've never seen that before in scripture. He was declaring, I am he. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. I started writing some things down about how powerful our God is and how he's the living word of God. That everything must obey. Everything must surrender when Jesus speaks. Please listen to this. When he speaks over your life and my life, every problem, every storm, every trial, every situation, every disease, every sickness, every addiction must bow to the name of Jesus. When Jesus speaks over your life, everything, every molecule, every atom, every subatomic particle, your soul, your spirit, your body, everything must bow to the king, must surrender to the king. That's right. And so what we need is Jesus to speak over our life because when he said, I am he, we need Jesus to speak, I am he. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We need Jesus to speak over our life. To understand that when he was with the disciples that the wind and the waves obeyed him. Listen, guys, we got to grasp what Jesus has given us and the power of our God and the love of our God that everything is controlled by him. He is in complete control. And when he speaks, everything must obey. When he spoke to the wind and the waves, it had to obey. When he spoke to Jairus' daughter, when he spoke to death because she was dead, listen, Jairus had to rise. When Lazarus was in the tomb for four days, stinking, the body decomposing, every cell in his body had to be resurrected. And it came back to life. Why? Because he's the creator of life. He's the creator of the universe. So when he speaks, everything must bow to him. When they came to arrest him, he was saying, listen, I am he. And when they all fell back, he was declaring he's the great I am. You and I, when we leave here tonight, we have to understand that every problem, every situation, every storm, every trial, every disease, everything must bow to our king. And when you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. We've been lied to. Like Jessica said tonight, it's already been paid right on the cross. It's already paid. All we got to do is come to the altar. All we've got to do is come to Jesus and say, Jesus, speak over my life. Speak to that storm. Speak to that cancer. Speak to that disease. Speak to that job that I don't have. Speak to that addiction. And when Jesus speaks of your life, that issue, that problem has to obey. Everything has to obey to our God. Think spiritually. Every demon, Satan himself, must surrender and bow to the king. Listen, when, when Satan came to God to tempt Job, to attack Job, what did he have to ask? For permission. He actually came and asked for permission. Right? The demon possessed man that had a legion of demons in it. A legion. How many is a legion? 4,500 to 6,000. So a Roman unit, right? A legion was roughly 4,500 to 6,000. So when, they, when Jesus comes to the demon-possessed man, he says, what's your name? He said, legion, for we are many. And here's the crazy thing. When Jesus went to cast them out, they had to beg and ask for permission to go into the pigs. Jesus was casting the demons out of the man. But see, they had to ask for permission. I want to tell you tonight, when God speaks over your life, everything must bow and surrender. We live victorious because of what God did upon the cross for you and I. Is this making sense tonight? Amen. That the power of our God, when he said, I am he, and I took away from it, is that everything must bow to our God. 
And when you look at the power and the love of our God and what he did for us 2,000 years ago, <laughs> we celebrate tonight Good Friday, the day that true love died, that took our place upon the cross, that he stepped in for you and I. And he lives in all of us. It's a crazy concept. When you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and resides within your spirit. You're triune. You're made of the body, soul, and spirit. Three parts. When you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and resides inside of you. And so then you have the God of the universe living inside of you. Tell me what can conquer you. Nothing can conquer you. Right? But we have to come to the revelation knowledge of who lives with inside, inside of us and who we can cry out to and say, Jesus, speak to that situation. Speak to that problem, right? It's tangible. This is real. So I want you to walk away tonight knowing that everything must bow. I'm reminded it says that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. So listen, you and I will bow. And when I look at that scripture, I look at it totally different now because when Jesus said, I am he, they could not resist what he just spoke. They literally stumbled back and fell down. Right? On that last day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. You have no choice. Your soul, your spirit, your body will completely surrender to the king of the universe. Because how you're made up, your molecules, your atoms, when he speaks, it must obey. What God is speaking to us Today in America, to every single human and mankind, listen, I've already paid it on the cross. Come to me and choose to bow and surrender now. And let me take every burden, let me take all your pain, every situation, every problem, every trial, every storm that's in your life, let me take it. I've already bought it. I've already died a horrible death. And let me take every burden, let me take all your pain. Every situation, every problem, every trial, every storm that's in your life, let me take it. I've already bought it. I've already died a horrible death. I've already risen from the grave. All you have to do is cry out to me and let me speak over your life. Let me speak to that problem. As we leave here tonight, will you let Jesus speak into your life? Will you let him bring life because he desires he come? He died upon the cross to set you free. He conquered sin and death so you don't have to do anything. He's already paid it. You don't have to walk around in your past. You can just look to Jesus and look to the future. Amen? As you leave here tonight, reflect upon what our God did for us to make a way. That he had the power to destroy mankind. When Peter went to cut off the guy's ear, Jesus said, listen, Peter, put the sword away. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. And he says, Peter, don't you know that if I wanted to, I could cry out to my father right now and he would dispatch 12 legions of angels. God was saying, listen, Peter, you don't understand. I come to do the will of the father. I've come. I'm life. Peter, don't you understand right now if I speak it? If I asked my father, he would send angels and I could just walk away and the angels would kill all of you. I want you to let that sink in. He has the power. And at that point, he could have said, listen, father, I don't want to do this. Send your angels. And 12 legions of angels would have came and killed them all. Wiped mankind out forever. But John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but would have everlasting life. Don't wait anymore. He's already paid it. He's already given us everlasting life. Amen? Be careful of what you watch. Careful what you listen to. Be careful what you talk about. And always savor the presence of God. We're not done yet. We're gonna, everybody's like, whoa, wait a minute. We're going to take communion together. Right? We're going to take communion together. We believe here at The Rock. We believe in open communion. We believe that Tom... Um, if you're born again, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you can take communion with us. Um, but God instructs us, instructs us 
on one week before we take communion, communion to examine our hearts. And it says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 through 30. So listen to this very carefully. It says, so anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judge, judgment upon yourself. So what I want to do now is I want you to just examine your heart. If you have any unconfessed sin, uh, any ill will, anything that you have, you're maybe harboring against someone. When you think about partaking of communion and what Jesus did for us, let's just clear our minds and our hearts and make sure that we're right. And if there's any sin that we have, let's, let's just ask God to forgive us. At this time, if the ushers come forward, again, we believe in open communion. We're going to come to the center aisle, and um, I want you to come up and get the elements, um, and we'll partake together after everyone has that one. So why don't you come to the middle, come forward, we'll partake of communion. Luke chapter 22 verse 17 says then he took the cup and gave thanks and said take this and divide it amongst yourselves for I say to you I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes and he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. At this time, let's partake of the bread. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's partake of the cup together. Lord God, we come.
come to you tonight. We thank you so much for what you did for us. Thank you for your broken body. Thank you for your shed that was blood. For your blood that was shed. It's all good, amen. I know God got a kick out of that. Lord, I thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for shedding your blood to set us free, to wipe away every sin in our life that we never have to look at the past. We never have to feel condemned or shamed again. Lord, God, thank you for setting us free and conquering sin and death forever. Lord, God, thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you never change. Thank you that we can bring our problems, our situations to you. And you can speak to those situations, those problems, and they must bow. Because of your power and your love. Lord God, as we leave here, let it be revelation to us that you willingly came that you're sovereign, you have supreme power and authority, but your love for us is never ending. That you come to make a way. Lord God, thank you. Does it encapsulate? Words can't describe it. How thankful we are, Lord God. We give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise. Let's do your name. In the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. 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 Listen, as you leave here tonight, know that God is sovereign. He's supreme authority. He has supreme power. But listen, let him, let him take control of the problems and the situations in your life. He has supreme authority and power. So release it to him. Listen, if you don't know Jesus, if you come tonight, you're visiting and you say, I've never accepted Christ. I don't want you to leave here without coming to know him. If you have questions, please come talk to me. I love you guys. Have an amazing week. And listen, here's the deal. Someday, you don't sleep in. I'm going to say it again. You don't sleep in. Look to somebody on your right and say, don't sleep in. Look at the person on your left and say, don't sleep in. Everyone here tonight must go to church. I know many of us are going to Agape. Uh, Pastor Gene's here tonight. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, we're, many of us are going to Agape service Sunday morning. But if you have family, friends, and they belong to a church, go and spend time with your family. But listen. Don't neglect what Sunday is all about. If there's a day that you need to exalt and glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it's Sunday. Amen? Amen. Be careful what you watch. careful what you listen to. Be careful what you talk about. And always savor the presence of God. I love you guys. Have a great Easter.